Andrew Lennock with Kobison. I'm a uh, sales engineer working with the Kobison Angle team. Great. So what are you going to show us today? So today we're going to show you how the Kobison platform can be used uh, as an interoperability and integration layer for connected vehicle and how we will deliver some next generation connected vehicle services using our administration. Okay. Great. So should we get started? Great. So what we've done for our demonstration, we have a vehicle owner center. We've created a mobile application and mocked up a vehicle head unit. So we're showing three things. The portability of an identity between connected vehicles, uh, the ability to manage multiple identities within a vehicle, and then finally how to prepare a connected vehicle for resale and remove all of your personal data from that, uh, from that vehicle. Okay. So, our, vehicle, or our demonstration starts with our owner named Adele, who owns an existing 2011 uh, Clever Coupe, and she's just bought one of our Clever Motors uh, 2015 sedans. So Adele starts uh, starts by taking ownership of the vehicle and adding it into her owner center. So I'm going to click on Enroll Another Vehicle, and Adele's now going to type in the VIN uh, for her new 2015 sedan. When Adele submits the VIN to the system, we do a back-end lookup to validate that Adele is the owner of this vehicle, and then once that's been validated, we add the vehicle to Adele's garage. So we've now created a relationship between Adele and her 2015 sedan. Okay. So now that, now that this relationship has been created, Adele can start to interact with the vehicle. So uh, you can see on the screen that the uh, owner center has recognized that Adele owns a 2011 coupe and has just added the 2015 sedan. Okay. And it's asking her if she'd like to synchronize her settings from her existing vehicle into her new vehicle. Okay. So we're going to uh, actually do that in the vehicle for demonstration purposes. Okay. So Adele is going to get up from her desk, um, you go out to her car. Uh, because she's an existing owner of uh, Clever Motors vehicle, she already has our mobile application installed. Mm -hmm. So she's going to use her, her mobile phone to unlock the vehicle. Okay. So we're going to walk over here to her mobile okay. phone. Okay, great. So here we have Adele's mobile phone with the Clever Motors mobile application on, running on the phone. Um, Adele can go into the garage on her mobile phone, and when she loads the garage, we'll see here's her existing 2011 coupe. Uh, we're picking up some telematics data from the uh, coupe fuel levels, and we also see her 2015 sedan. Um, you can see because we uh, made that relationship between Adele and her vehicle in the previous step, uh, her mobile app is now aware of that vehicle and, and can access that vehicle uh, telematic mm -hmm. data as well as send remote commands to the vehicle. Okay. So Adele's going to unlock the car, and here we're going to enter a PIN. And this is unlocking the actual vehicle doors, or is this unlocking the vehicle to enable her to start the vehicle or all of these? This above? is actually unlocking the vehicle doors, okay. so she can physically get into the vehicle okay. and, and start to interact with it. Uh, here we entered a pin. Mm -hmm. uh, this could e just as easily be a pattern or a thumbprint reader on an iPhone. Okay. Uh, whatever authentication mechanism the uh, OEM wanted to okay. require. So now that the vehicle's unlocked, she can get into the vehicle and uh, we'll move over to the head unit. Okay. Okay, so here's Adele. Uh, Adele's now in her vehicle, uh, and when she turns it on, the head unit, because of that relationship, already knows that it belongs to Adele, mm -hmm. and it's already downloaded her profile picture. Mm -hmm. So when she starts to interact with the vehicle, she can tap on her profile picture. And uh, much like we saw on the owner center, the vehicle knows that uh, she owns a 2011 coupe and has just purchased this 2015 sedan, and it's asking her if she'd like to synchronize her settings. Okay, so just to clarify, she's now in her brand new car. That's right. And she's setting it up, and it says, would you like me to move over all your settings and information from your old car? That's exactly right. Great. So this, this functionality to move these settings over is contained in something we call a business logic module. And a business logic module contains all of the all of the business logic and all the integrations to perform a particular task. Mm -hmm. So uh, by, by taking this type of a approach to design, we're able to uh, make those capabilities available both in the big browser uh, like we saw earlier mm -hmm. and in the uh, head unit. They can also be available on the mobile phone. They can also be available to the dealers and call centers. Mm -hmm. So a dealer could perform the synchronization for Adele uh, and if she needed to call in and get assistance from a call center they could perform this uh, synchronization for her as well. Okay. All of them using that same capability, that same business logic and, and delivering the exact same experience. Okay. 
So here Adele is going to say yes and, and synchronize her settings over. We're seeing um, right now her vehicle, 2015, is talking to the Covis and Cloud, yep. as well as uh, the OEM's backend systems and her 2011 sedan. Okay. It's collecting all the information needed uh, to configure the new vehicle for her mm -hmm. and setting up her new vehicle experience. Okay. And is that a uh, realistic time frame? I mean, that was really fast. Is that about how normal, how long it normally takes? It is. It is. And now it's going to it's going to vary depending on implementation and the technology mm -hmm. available in the vehicle and the amount of data being synchronized. Okay. Um, but that is. Uh, that is real world hitting APIs and talking to backend systems today. So that is representation of. Okay. This okay. is running on our production platform. Uh, okay. And so you'll see there's no servers underneath. Yep. <laughs> it's actually you know, connecting back to our it's data going center. Going to the to cloud. <laughs> cloud yes. That's right. Okay. So, Great. Uh, when I click continue, uh, because we have Adele in the vehicle for the first time, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to take her through a couple more steps. Yeah. Um, we already have uh, Adele's account on file, mm -hmm. uh, and we have emergency contact information for her. We're going to uh, bring that to her attention, pre-fill it, give her the opportunity to review it mm -hmm. and update it if necessary. Okay. Uh, but she doesn't have to retype it all in um, like you would if you were setting up a new account. So she's fine with this information, so we're going to continue. Uh, there's also an opportunity to bring uh, new capabilities to, of the vehicle to Adele's attention. Mm -hmm. So her new vehicle has a concierge service built into it. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, that requires a separate subscription. Okay. So this is an opportunity to bring that to her attention and give her the possibility to subscribe to that service. And is this like a location-based service where it knows where you are and it's recommending things along your route or uh, in your setting preferences for those recommendations? It, is that the type of thing that it does? Yeah, exactly. Okay. As well as as well as being able to call in for reservations and types of things. Okay. So Adele's going to choose to um, uh, subscribe later. So she's going to say no, thank you for now. Uh, she also has the opportunity to update her communication preferences. Mm -hmm. Again, because this is not creating a new account, we're merely migrating an existing account. We already have preferences on file for Adele. Mm -hmm. um, this is just an opportunity for her to update them. She's happy with her preferences. And what kinds of things might those preferences be? So that's things like um, uh, oil life alerts, uh, mm -hmm. tire pressure alerts, um, mm -hmm. vehicle error codes. Okay. Uh, does she want to receive those uh, by SMS or by email? Um, and she would be able to choose uh, okay. you know, each of those for each of those types of events how she wants to receive them. Okay. And then uh, finally, the system recognizes that Adele uh, has a secondary driver on, on her 2011 coupe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's her husband, Paul. And it's asking her if she'd like to uh, invite Paul to migrate his profile to the new vehicle as well. Mm -hmm. So she's going to say yes to that. And I'm actually going to uh, punch in my phone number here. And this is actually going to send an SMS to me, letting me know that, uh, or letting Paul know that he's been added as a okay. driver on Adele's vehicle. Let's say okay to that. And uh, now, now that we've said okay to that, uh, Adele is greeted with her personalized uh, in, in vehicle experience. Mm -hmm. um, it's connecting to her phone uh, and her calendar. We can go to music, and we can see her music applications are here. Uh, her SiriusXM subscription has come over. Mm -hmm. uh, if you back out. We can also go into applications and see her social media applications, mm -hmm. as well as the identity the, uh, logged in associated with each of those accounts okay. that's come over to yeah. the Okay. So now that Adele has her personalized in-vehicle experience, uh, she can take a look at additional drivers and start to manage the additional driver's experience. So if she goes into settings and then drivers, we'll see Adele and now her husband Paul is in here as well. Um, Adele. Uh, can go in and edit these profiles directly within here. Uh -huh. She can set privileges and permissions uh, or roles for individual drivers. So if she gets mad at Paul, she can delete him? That's exactly right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, she can set a geo fence and, and restrict yes. his access to different vehicle okay. uh, capabilities. She can also uh, add new drivers. Go so, ahead. <laughs> okay. So now that Adele has um, has uh, has her her profile and her husband's in here, um, she's been able to manage and set pr privileges and roles for uh, for those drivers. She can also invite additional drivers. Mm -hmm. So she can enter contact information for those drivers, or she can browse her. Uh, uh, phone's address book, 
or for Facebook friends. Mm -hmm. And we can actually see this is actually implemented uh, with the Facebook APIs going out and seeing oh, okay. uh, which of Adele's uh, Facebook friends are authorized drivers. To drive uh, her car. Or that are uh, authorized to be a driver on, yes. her, on her vehicle. So she can choose, um, she can choose an additional driver and, and add that. Mm -hmm. That's awfully nice of Adele <laughs> to let her Facebook friends drive her car. That's right. So the final thing that uh, that we're going to demonstrate is how to prepare her 2011 coupe for racing. Okay. So we're going to go back over to the uh, owner center for that. Okay. Okay. So now that Adele has her uh, her new 2015 set up and she has her husband and additional drivers configured in it, uh, the last thing that she needs to do is get her 2011 coupe ready for resale. Mm -hmm. So what she's going to do is come back to her owner center and go into her garage. And we're going to find the 2011 and we're going to remove it from the owner center. And by removing the 2011 from her owner center, we're breaking that relationship between the vehicle and Adele's account. As soon as that relationship is broken, uh, Adele is no longer able to access any telematics data off the vehicle. She's no longer able to send any remote commands to the vehicle, and she um, and, it's, and it's now uh, also going to receive a uh, API call or a web service call mm -hmm. telling it to do a factory reset. So okay. the head unit in the vehicle will uh, wipe Everything all her personal wipes. data off and restore, okay. return to that. Uh, factory default configuration. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm.